Girl farms come in many shapes and sizes and over time can be lost or even forgotten. But to the lucky few who remember them, you have the advantage to gain a lot more gold. So today we'll be looking at 10 forgotten farms. Let us begin. Starting off this list, we have the cloud farming. Now, for those who don't know, cloud farming is done by the use of engineering using the item, the Zap Throttle Moat Extractor. Here you will fly around any of the outland zones and as such, use this item on the gas clouds in the zones specifically. You will receive moats from this. Each zone provides different moats, such as in Zanga Marsh, you'll get moats of water, Nagrand, moats of air, Shadow Moon Valley, moats of shadow, and Netherstorm, which will provide moats of mana. For myself, I prefer farming Netherstorm and Nagrand, as these tend to give the best returns for my time invested, and is a different way of farming in the open world than opposed to gathering professions. Making our way into the BFA expansion, we'll be looking at another item with prerequisites. These are, you have to be an Alliance player, and you have to at least become friendly with the Honeyback Hive. If you have not, and you are an Alliance player, then the guide for gaining reputation with this faction is in my add-on Worth It Guides. Next up, you'll want to fly around the zone of Stormsong Valley, and you'll be collecting Royal Jelly to sell on. This is able to be sold on the auction house and also is used to gain reputation with the Honeyback Hive. This gets a good return value due to the reputation having the B mount locked behind it, and a fair amount of players are willing to buy the jelly required for exalted status instead of farming for this themselves. Moving on to an old expansion, and in my personal opinion, the most defining expansion, we have the Pygmy Suckerfish Farm from the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Located in the Howling Fjord, you will want to make your way over towards inland rivers where you will be able to fish up these fish. These can only be fished from schools mainly and as such you'll need to keep moving around hence why I prefer a druid for this farm. This demands a strong gold per hour due to it being used in the alchemy craft pygmy oil which also sells for a good return as well. Another forgotten farm or should I say farms, is nether site ore and nether dust pollen farms. Located in Outland, you will want to make your way over towards the Netherwing Ledge in Shadow Moon Valley. This will require you, of course, to have mining and herbalism to farm these materials up. Only on this ledge you'll be able to find and gather these items, which are used in daily hand-ins for the Netherwing reputation. These can fetch a good return, but does depend on your server. I have found through testing that more role-playing servers seem to sell it more so that is a little pointer for you right there. This gains its value due to aiding in the Netherwing reputation, which has the Netherwing drakes locked behind them, which does make it quite a handy little farm, even if you are farming for this reputation for yourself. Coming at number five, we have an oldie but a goodie. This of course is the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. This is a mage specific farm where this item can be obtained from any porcupine in the open world world. By far the best farming location is located within the Jade Forest in Pandaria. You'll want to farm this location by circling round in a loop, making sure you give the mobs time to respawn, but also providing a constant stream of mobs to kill. This item sells on the auction house for a strong amount of gold and is one item I must always have on the auction house. Next up at number six, we have another class specific farm but this one is for all of you rogues out there this of course is the dwarven dice farm you'll be wanting to first make your way over towards the onslaught harbor in ice crown here is where you'll want to run around the area pickpocketing all of the scarlet onslaught members this decahedral dwarven dice has a chance of dropping from any of these mobs However, if you find yourself to have 
pickpocketed all of the mobs already. These pockets can be reset by either waiting for the resets to happen themselves or my personal way is to kill everyone I have pickpocketed and then by the time I have done a full loop of the zone they should have respawned with fresh pockets. This is where I will repeat this process until the item drops. As for number seven you will want to make your way over towards Tanan jungle in Draenor. Here you'll be wanting to complete the repeatable quest Tooth and Claw by the Saber Stalker's reputation. We will be farming for a soulbound item. So you're probably wondering how do we make gold with an item that can't sell? Well, you see, you'll be farming for a quest item known as Tanan Jungle Tooth, which upon returning this in with the Saber Stalkers, you will receive a, the soulbound item black flang claw but this still does not answer the question well, next up you'll want to be trading these black flang claws into the saber stalkers quartermaster for the savage cub battle pet this can prove to be quite great in regards to returns and is something i rarely see farmed anymore hence why it made it on this list another reputation farm that is much simpler is the shadow dust farm this is used sold and traded for reputation with the shatari skyguard to do this farm you want to first make your way over towards sketis in terracar forest this is where you will find arakoa of sketis which have roughly a 47% chance of dropping the item in question. You are able to gain quite a large amount of shadow dust per hour and with the gold value and rate of sale being reasonable due to the Shatari having the nether ray mounts locked behind their reputation, this makes it a quite a great farm that a lot of people rarely do but still pulls in some great gold every day. Talking about older farms that have been forgotten, how about we go back to the Eastern Plaguelands? Here we will be wanting to make our way over towards the ruins of the Scarlet Enclave. From Scarlet Archmages, you have a 1.5% chance of the Crusader enchant to drop from these mobs. Take note as this recipe is quite rare and can only drop from these mobs specifically, making it sell for a truly stupid price in regards to gold per hour. Now let us finish this list off with one farm which I feel is one of the best around forgotten gold farming locations. This of course is the sealed tome of the Lost Legion farm. Located on the Isle of Thunder in Pandaria, you are able to farm this item from any of the rare elites on the Isle. However, the catch is that you have to be a warlock for this item to drop. The drop chance is roughly around 2%, which means you'll want to park an alt on this island and camp these mobs. I know for myself I love doing a lap every morning and that is mostly enough to keep a good supply in my bank and on the auction house for regular gold every week. Other than that guys that concludes our list for 10 best forgotten gold farms. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon. Mm -hmm.